Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy! Welcome back to more Xenoblade Chronicles! Last time, we returned to Colony 6 and helped Charlotte, Juju, and Atharon rebuild their home. We were able to get it back on its feet, got all the necessities taken care of, and got ourselves some very nice rewards for taking care of all that. This time, I thought we'd return to Colony 9 and do the same, because ever since Sharla and Dunban had joined us, quite a few new things have become available to us in this area. Not only that, but there were a lot of new things that opened up after the Mechon attack, but I just kind of thought back then we should really get on with things and head off to Tefer Cave and not dwell on this area for too long. So we'll be taking care of those this time as well. Now, starting things off, who's got the first quest for us? Well... Believe it or not, out of everyone who could have a quest for us, Gemman's actually got a pretty important one for us. So let's talk to him, and he's calling us a youngin, even though Dunban is canonically 30 and is a seasoned war veteran. Yeah. But seriously, he's telling us that it is now possible to shrink furnaces, as in you fire a shrink ray at it, and you just have a smaller furnace. And he could do all this for us, but unfortunately he is missing a one part. Wait a minute, you can get it, you can get me it, it's called an ultra small reactor. They developed it in Colony 6 to use in ether mining. Finding one could be tough after what happened there, though. I did hear there's some people looking to fix up Colony 6. If that colony can get back on its feet, you might get one there. Well, funny story about that, good sir. Think you can get me one ultra small reactor? Indeed we can. We already have one on us. For doing this, we will get a mobile furnace. We already have it, so, um, wait. What do you mean we haven't caught the ultra small reactor? Of course we do. Yeah, <laughs> okay, at least he realized it. Now I can make it that mobile furnace. Hand it over, I'll fix it up in a jiffy. Right, just put that in there. Whoopsie daisy, whoa! Slide that there. That's not right. That goes here. Almost got it. And he made the entire thing with his arms folded in front of him. That is some serious talent. All done. This mass producing reactor is no longer a fanciful dream. And I'm gonna let you have it. Now you can craft gems whenever you want. Although I won't mind if you still come around just to chat. As you would guess, of course I want to try this thing out, but we're kind of standing in the area where we could just talk to him and make gems anyway, so how about we show off our new portable furnace by walking 10 feet away and making the gems? It's in your inventory. Uh, how about we go over the effects of our two new party members and have them work together? Sharla has gentle bonus for her shooter ability. The cylinder gauge fills up more with a gentle flame, so you get to keep more of your cylinders if she's the shooter. As for Dunban, he's Combo Master. Qualities grow stronger when the flame is constant. Have him make Dunban the shooter and... Uh, that... Oh, God. Um... No, for this kind of gem, I do not want that combination. Uh... Honestly, as much as I would love to demonstrate these two right off the bat for a gem that would be this good, I probably just want to do Shulk and Ryan right here because the two of them have by far the highest affinity and when trying to make a serious gem... Two party members that get along great. That's what I like to see when gem crafting. And oh, it has to load. Uh, that is due to a new mechanic that we might see here in a second. To me, to you. Woo. Let me help too. To me. All right. Incredible. <laughs> oh, it's all so great. What you saw there was party support. At random, other party members may come in and increase the qualities of a gem. In this case, we have a strength of three gem that'll give us 25 points, and a weapon power two that'll boost the activation rate of other gems by 8%. For instance, if your weapon has two slots and you equip a break gem and then equip this, that break effect will have an 8% higher chance of going off, so it like copies the ability. But uh, I know that you're not really here just to hear tutorial stuff. You want to hear what kinds of things Dunben and Sharla are going to say, so how about we make just some random stupid throwaway gem? that no matter how terrible they work together and how low their affinity is, we can have a little fun hearing them talk. Let's do that. Okay, let's get on Consider with it. Consider it done. This is tricky. Like this? We did it. Here, try doing this. Hope this works. Uh, yeah. Hope this works. Uh, yeah. This is tricky. Like this? Good. This is tricky. Uh, yeah. Finished. Not quite as good as Shulk and Ryan, but what more could you ask for? As you would guess, I want to craft loads and loads of gems because we got so many crystals, Shulk and Ryan have very high affinity, and thus they can make some really, really nice gems. You don't necessarily have to use Shulk and Ryan, it's just that the two of them work together exceptionally well, and by this point, you're probably going to have near maximum affinity. I mean, I got purple affinity with them, that's one step away from the max. And they're just naturally going to make better gems than the others at this point because they have so much more affinity than every other combination. Quite a while later, we have completed all that gem crafting. I will be updating my gems at the end of this video like I typically do. Now, speaking of updating my equipment, you know how every piece of armor looks different and how, you know, your characters will always look different based on what you equip to them? Well, I'd like to bring your attention to 
Dunban's pants. For whatever reason, these particular pants and those particular shoes don't meet, so you can just see right through his legs. <laughs> I don't know why, I just found that very funny, but enough about that. As you recall, we found all three items that Cheryl asked us to find. How about we talk to her? Oh, hello. Oh, hello. I, I don't believe it. There's no question. This is my son's armor, gun, and knife. He saved up so hard to buy them. I remember how he smiled when he changed into his new armor. I have no choice but to accept it. Nothing will bring my son back. But at least some part of him has returned to the place he grew up. For that, I am very grateful. Don't worry about it. It was nothing. Yeah, we eat problems like this for breakfast. Ryan, that was kind of insensitive, being totally honest with you. Well, at least she's happier now. We have at long last completed Mementos of a Lost Son. We got a Bomber Lancer. Uh, Bomber definitely is putting it mildly at what Ryan was saying right there. And after completing that, this brings me to something new. Cheryl will no longer be standing over there, but instead, over on this bridge. If you talk to her after completing that quest, I saw old man Dionysus recently. I hadn't spoken of him in years. He comforted me about my son. It was so nice of him. He used to help my boy out, too. He might not look it, but Dionysus is one man you can truly rely on. Because we completed that quest, and because we knew both of them, she gave us some more affinity with Colony 9 absolutely free of charge. And that's everything that's been a long time coming. We can now gemcraft anywhere, and we've completed Mementos of a Lost Son. But last time, we saw that we now have two stars with Colony 9. We also now have Charlotte and Dunban as party members. Because of this, loads more quests around the colony have opened up to us, and I'd like to take care of those. So how about we change the time, and let's see what we can do around here. Silly me, I actually wanted to change it to nighttime for this first one that I want to take care of. We want to head over in the commercial district, and south right here, we got a couple browsing a rather romantic looking ether lamp shop. Hello. Sylvia. Told a not bomb merchant called Daza some info I'd heard. It was straight from you know who, something about red pollen orbs. Can't say I understood it myself, but Daza seemed really pleased. He was so grateful for the info, he paid me a handsome reward. So, uh, now I'm rich, don't tell anyone. Got a little bit more information about red pollen orbs right there. And after we talk to her, we have a quest from Leopold right here. I'm used to being in debt, but never this badly. That's kind of not the best thing to admit that you're used to being in debt, but eh, I'm sure he hears it every day and I'm not making things better. Total keeps growing bigger and bigger and bigger. The worst part is it's affecting my ability to write anything decent, so you're a bit of a writer, huh, buddy? Well, in that case, well, you barely have any cash flow coming in at all, so he can't really do his job. Whoa! Listen here, Sonny. You better pay me back. 300,000 G in two days. You do realize what'll happen if you don't pay, right? But, but you can't. We agreed on two months. I can't get it that quickly. Well, deal's changed. If you don't pay up, I'm gonna seize everything you own. The bloke who lent me money is really turning the screws. I don't know what I can do, but I have to keep up payment somehow. We have an impoverished critic. We have to meet King Squeeze and object to his harsh collection methods. I think we actually saw King Squeeze a little bit earlier. He is right behind Gem Man's stall. We saw him briefly earlier when we were going around getting some generic quests in Colony 9 first time that we were here. Well, he's not exactly directly behind Gem Man's stall, but you know what I mean. We just need to head up here and... What does this guy have to say? Oh, this little insect is really getting on my nerves. Wait, I'm not talking about you. Uh, not a smart thing to say with an earshot. Hello, King Squeeze. You think I'm pressing our good friend Leopold for too much? For money he doesn't have? I can't deny it, but I'm not an unreasonable money lender. I just wanted to pay back the money he owes me. Is that so much to ask? He could do it if he just stopped splashing out on his girlfriend. Then his wages could go to paying me back instead. And then we'd be square. I'd, call, I'd gladly call the whole thing off. Once again, very nicely done. Of course. It's child's play getting men like him to spend all their money. Good work, my girl. Here's your new orders. This much? Are you nuts? Why do you need him to get into this much debt? I think it's about time I got out of this game for good. I want that boy's house. It's in a nice area, worth quite a bit. The infamous King Squeeze is packing it all in, huh? Alright, you've got a deal. 
Expect a sizable contribution to your retirement fund. Make sure you don't screw this up. And make sure he doesn't find out. You would say that. You're the one who's looking to cash in. Leopold would never blame me anyway. He loves me. Definitely shady stuff going on. Whoa, what do you want? You can wipe that suspicious look off your face for a start. There's nothing going on here. Defensive! We now have the option to talk to either Sylvian or Leopold. There are different endings on this depending on how you do it, and of course I will be showing off the different ones. But um, for the time being, how about we talk to Leopold directly about what's going on? Yeah, within an earshot of Sylvian. Hold on, you say Sylvian's been working for King Squeeze? Right under my nose the whole time? So what was their plan? Make Sylvian spend all my money so I'd have to borrow more? Then hit me up for repayments? Nah, it can't be. That girl's been a big spender since the day she was born. She would never spend my money to line King Squeeze's pockets. But if King Squeeze's business falls apart, wouldn't that mean my debts will disappear with him? What a plan! It's brilliant! Yes, get so far in debt that there's nothing left to repay. Wonderful. Get your hands on some Caterpile poison for me. Then distract King Squeeze and secretly slip it in his pocket? I intend to arrange an interview with him for a fake article. Something like, Colony Nine's top earners of the year. He'll take the bait, we'll meet, and I'll coincidentally find the poison. He'll, he gets incriminated, loses face, and his business is finished. He'll never show his face around here again. Kind of a cold way of going about this, but... Being honest with you, this is kind of the better ending of the two if you're looking at the affinity chart impact. We need to find five lots of Caterpile poison from the Caterpiles in Tefer Cave. Or, of course, if you don't want to fight, you can always trade with Francois here in the residential district. Here you go, buddy. I got something for ya. Whether you know it or not, I probably shouldn't say that out loud. <laughs> okay, I'm kind of breaking the fourth wall. Oh, I know. Leopold's too chicken to come give me my money. Hello? Anybody in there? Cack out your tongue or something? If you don't have anything to say, get on your bike. Go on. Hop it. Yes. And we're back. Yes, we hid the poison in his pocket. Right then, it's all set. I don't know how Ryan would be able to sneak that, considering how big those gauntlets are, but okay. I'll go and find it and make it a big, ugly scene in public. Then I can write the real story, an expose on his dodgy deals. And then King Squeeze is finished. I kind of wonder how well it's going to work out with Sylvian being within an earshot of this entire plan, considering we know for a fact that she's in on it. You should have seen his face. Now I'll be out my back forever. Apparently she wasn't that loyal to him. I reckon things will be okay with my girlfriend, too. Now I'll be able to write without worrying about my pile of debt. Cheers. That is it. That is a kind of a dishonest way to get back at a dishonest man, but I guess in his logic, two wrongs do make a right. We've got an achievement shaping history, and to show the impact that had on the affinity chart, we have got revenge, endless love, and accomplices. Should you have done this the other way, you would have had two bad affinity links between well, not only King Squeeze and Leopold, but also Leopold and Sylvian. But of course, you know, you'll see all that in the end slate, you know, all that good stuff. With that one all done, how about we do a brighter, shinier quest at a brighter, shinier time of the day? Brighter, sh wow, tongue twister right there, apparently. Because Francois, the one that we traded with during that line of quests, has something for us, and I think this will be much happier than framing someone for attempted murder. It's such a tragedy. Wow, starting off on a very cheery note right here. Sounds like you've got a problem. We'll hear you out. Tell us what's wrong. Oh, how kind of you to stop and listen. All the flowers in my garden got crushed in the attack. I worked so hard to grow them, and how it saddens me to look at them. I know what it feels like to lose something important. Oh, wow. Way to not have a very sad quest right here. We need to find five Dawn Hydrangeas. Yeah, five of them. They are collectible around Colony 9, so if you haven't been grabbing a lot of item orbs, you might not have all these already. Wow, um, I was about to say I probably don't, but... Well, that was... not difficult at all. I guess, for lack of a better term, let's just turn these in, because I got them. There we go. This time I'll try growing them to be more resilient. Uh, if you could grow plants to withstand mech on, that would be really nice. Well, yeah. Please come and see the Dawn Hydrangeas when they're in bloom. We have already completed this one. That was really nice and easy. Let's take the soil gauntlets. Oh, I get it. Soil because she grows things. It's actually kind of fun. Sorry about the cut there. Got briefly interrupted. Plus, zooming out the camera does take a little bit of time, so I guess it all worked out nicely. The next side quest that I want to take care of is right over here with Susanna, but she doesn't really have anything for us right now. 
That is because we need to talk to somebody first, which should be around this area, I believe. You, yes, Moritz. My graffiti's pretty nifty, eh? I clean it up. I cl I'll clean it up afterwards. So don't go telling mom. <laughs> nice and mischievous right there. Now, about Susanna. After you have talked to that boy over there, she should have a quest for you. Indeed, she does. Look at her character design. Uh, her and Francois separated at birth. Yeah, that's the reason why I want to do these in this order. Maybe you can help. Uh, why? Figure out that Francois is actually your sister? Do you know a way that I can get my son to start studying? Could you go into more detail? Well, Shulk sounds like just the man for the job when it comes to knowing how to study. He's a smart kid, and he's definitely nerdy enough to know that. I've always been a terrible student despite being a nerd, though, so I can't really say I relate. It's terrible. He just spends all his time playing and never studies. It won't be long before he's falling behind at school. I know. How about using sweets as a reward? That should work. He just needs an incentive. Do you think you could bring some black nectar for me? That should do the trick. It's important to aim for something. Well, if you think it'll work, you know about studying. We have education-minded Susanna. She wants two lots of black nectar from the Skeeters in Teffer Cave. Definitely easy to hunt enemies, but if you were just playing Teffer Cave normally, I would wager that you already have these on you. Uh, wow, I don't. Well, all that's just as well, because the person who trades those items, believe it or not, at about 10 a.m. to noon is right over here, Kenny Rohan. He wanders around the colony, but around this time he is in this area. Kenny Rohan's a bit of an interesting character. In fact, if you follow him around the colony throughout the day, you will find that he only sleeps three hours a day, which is kind of funny. Um, you can see on screen right now where he is at what times, but this is just a really nice convenient time that you can see him at. Let's trade that, and wow, I really only had... I didn't even have one of them, holy crap! I got them both, so you can stop socializing now. Wow, we got Affinity there, like, immediately, just from talking to her right then and there. It didn't even take a little while for it to pop up. All's well that ends well, once again. Charla loves saying that. Can't wait to see what kind of genius he'll become. It's amazing what one can achieve when you have candy. <laughs> Let's get our light cap. Yet, after that, she has another quest immediately. I blame the parents myself. <laughs> Look at her animations. They're just like, ah, uh, like, you know, did you see her hair? Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> Thanks for your help last time. The Black Nectar did get my son studying, but not for long. Now he just eats the sweets instead of studying. Well, start one, stop one problem, start another. And he just goes into play. Sounds like you got a problem. Well, Shulk, is this our cue? <laughs> Dunban really does know how this stuff goes. He really is the wise master who just knows how this world works. So don't bother me about Moritz anymore. Can I ask your help with something else? I want you to bring me two pieces of heavy bun of iron. Um... I'm worried about what you're gonna do with that. Um, considering that you wanna. <laughs> yeah, what could you be saying as heavy as that for? I really hope you're not planning to hit your child with it. Well, er. Exercise! That's it! I've put on weight lately! Yes, er, exercise is all! Um, this sounds very shady to say the least. Um, you can get these in Temper Cave really easily, but, um. I would wager we already have these. Could we at least have this one and not have me go crazy with it? Uh, maybe? Uh, no, I don't have these either. Unfortunately, the trade for this item is insane. The easiest trade possible for it requires you to have five stars with Colony 9, and you're probably only going to have two, maybe three right now if you're lucky. So that just simply isn't doable. But the enemy that you need to hunt for, it's in a really nice, convenient spot right near the Magmel Ruins, so that shouldn't be that bad. Uh, where exactly? Where are you? Aha! Right near the slope, there is an iron bun of right here that should be no trouble at all for you to take out. And oh! Let's sort this out nice and quickly. I don't have time for small fry. You guys are a little bit slow on the draw there. I got an achievement, ninja skills. You get that for attacking an enemy and killing. You get that for one hitting an enemy before it even saw you. Uh, wow, that was really easy. I got all I needed in two kills though. But I have to say, while we were hunting enemies like that. It's kind of fascinating how the uh, wildlife on Bionis has adapted to use mech on armor. Like, you know how the Bunivs hold on to pieces of mech on armor because it's harder than any substance that you can find in this area that they'd be able to get. I don't know, just like, as somebody who really, really enjoys, you know, just getting immersed in fictional worlds, it's really cool to see, like, the wildlife adapting to the situation that's at hand here, you know, and using mech on armor. I mean, it's not just those enemies either. The Arachnid did it as well. But, uh, here is your mech on armor pieces that you want to use for whatever reason. Wow, this is really heavy stuff. I'd like to see my son avoid his studies with him this tying him down. Well, um, it's a foolproof plan, thank you. I guess basically using a ball and chain to hold your kid in place is better than what I thought you were going to be doing with it, but... Charlotte got a level up and that's it. Oh, if you talk to her again, I admit using heavy butt of iron is going a bit too far. 
but at least I got that son of mine to study. Um, well, always looking on the bright side. Talk to her again, you can get that. And he says, maybe you'll even end up more clever like Francois' daughter. Hmm. I get the feeling there's some kind of connection going on here. Or not. If you look at that, you can see that they're just simply neighbors. And that is every quest in Colony 9 that I wanted to take care of. Now, that's not every quest. <laughs> Somebody with a quest walks into frame as soon as I say that. That was perfect. Uh, there are other quests that we could technically knock out, but like I said, I won't be doing them if we don't have the character that comments on them, or if it's in a line of quests and we can't see the line of quests through to the end. So, we will be back here in the future, just know that. The affinity chart's looking like this. You should have two stars of affinity in Colony 9 at this point. You should be very close to three, and yes, at three more would open up. But I don't have any others that I want to take care of to give us that last little push. Uh, here's what my party's looking like. I should mention that every time you have a step up of affinity, you know, yellow, green, blue, white, pink... Uh, every step up, a new heart-to-heart -heart will open up between any combination of characters with the exception of blue affinity. So even though Shulk and Sharla, as well as Ryan and Sharla, got leveled up to blue affinity uh, from doing all these quests, there are no new heart-to-hearts available to them. Yeah, blue kind of sucks. You just have chain attacks and things like that being helped by them, not much else. Now, there are other quests that I want to take care of, but I don't want to handle those right now because I feel like we've gotten a lot done here. I mean... We got the ultra small reactor for the gem man over there, so we can now craft gems anywhere. That is very important. And we also took care of some pretty nice quests other than that one. So, next time on Xenoblade Chronicles. How about back here in Colony 6, we see what the residents that have moved in ever since the reconstruction began have for us. See you guys then. And oh, that sky and that Bionis arm hanging down there, it's all so pretty.